Hi, I'm Jim Molinelli, the Remodeling Professor. Tonight's topic is about kitchen countertops. Last week we covered kitchen cabinets. Tonight we're dealing with countertops. And next week we'll get into preliminary layout and design of a kitchen. Kitchen design part one. So without further ado, let's get going about kitchen countertops. The characteristics that you want to take into account when you shop for or select a countertop include its looks, how it provides protection to both the cabinets below and the wall behind, its durability, its value, which is what it gives you in exchange for its cost, and the maintenance that you might have to perform on that countertop. So tonight, we'll be looking at the following countertop materials in our critique. Some you are probably familiar with and some you may not be. And then we'll look at the pros and the cons and the benefits of each material here. And ultimately, we're going to end with a cost comparison so that you see what the prices are of the different countertops as you buy them. So the first material we will investigate, bamboo. The second is butcher block and wood tops. The third, concrete. Granite is fourth. Then laminate tops, quartz tops, recycled glass tops, soapstone, solid surfaces. And finally, we'll look at tile tops. The first one on our list is bamboo. Let's dive in. What you see here are a glimpse of some bamboo tops. Bamboo tops, pros and cons. Bamboo is widely available. It can be purchased in large sizes from almost anywhere these days. It is very inexpensive. So as a countertop choice, you will not spend a great deal to get bamboo. It is a green product, which means that we harvest it and replant it and it grows quickly and we will never hurt the environment by using bamboo as a countertop the way we would for certain hardwoods. It has a good color range. You can go from light to dark and a lot of in-betweens. Uh, the bamboo itself has different coloration, and it can be stained. It has two finish options, and we'll look at those. Now, the drawbacks of bamboo is that, as it is with many of our countertop materials, there will be joints and seams. So where one large piece of bamboo meets another, there is a seam in the countertop, and we have to take that into account. Also, bamboo is a fairly soft material in certain directions against the grain or across the grain, so it can be a little bit more easily marked, dented, dinged, or scratched, and it does require some maintenance. Because it is a porous material, it can absorb. Anything that can absorb is both a cleanliness issue with things like eggs and stainable materials like wine, uh, beets, orange juice, um, and it, it is a, a hygiene issue as well. Um, but in this case, um, we want to seal the surface so that you can work with food on it and be safe. So let's look at the bamboo. On the screen, you see a couple of examples and the horizontal grain is what is on the large surface and that means the end grain is on the sides. You look over here and you see the end grain of all these pieces of bamboo and all these pieces. These are actually plies that give strength to the top so that it doesn't warp, okay? You see the same thing here, end grain here, side grain here, and the long grain this way. Very gorgeous material. And here it is in countertop use, and it's the other way. You don't see any long, stripes of bamboo, what you see is the end grain. These are all small little pieces, about three inches tall and about one inch wide and about a half or three quarters. 
and they're all glued together. This top is unbelievably strong. You could take a, a butcher cleaver to that and it would stand up to it. Yes, you would mark the surface, but you would not cut through the wood. Bamboo is such a very strong material when it's organized this way. But it's got a very distinctive look. And if that's something that interests you, you can see a light version of it here and a dark version of it there. Bamboo in the other direction looks a lot more like the wood that you're used to seeing. It's striated and the grain runs the long way. The end grain is only on the end. Same here, end grain on the end. And again here. Here you can see a few of the knuckles that are kind of prevalent in many of the bamboos that we see today. Uh, but it's a gorgeous material and it really is a tremendous value because you can get it at a very reasonable price point. You'll notice way over in the corner that this bamboo strand is going in this direction and this is going in this direction, which means that there is a seam right there. Generally speaking, you'll put a clear silicone in there to hold the pieces together and stop liquids and solids from getting into that crack and going through. So that is what I mean by joints. So that's our primer on bamboo tops. Next is butcher block and wood. You'll notice that these are two fine examples of wood tops, both of them showing off under mounted sinks. The wood is put together, individual slats and pieces glued up into a very large piece in the case of the island on the left and a long piece in the case of the counter on the right. Uh, you see the thickness, it's a traditional countertop thickness, no problems there. Uh, the undermount sink works. Um, in many of the tops we'll look at today, the undermount sink is the preferred sink. There are some that won't work with it, so we'll have to look at that and I'll point that out later. Uh, it's just a gorgeous material. And on a top where you'll only be doing eating or prep, it may work beautifully. In a top where you're going to have lots and lots of abrasives and soaps and water, the edges of this will probably uh, become drier and brittle sooner. Um, it would be require more maintenance. So let's talk about the pros and cons of our wood tops for a moment. Wood is widely available. You can buy butcher block and wood tops everywhere. The home centers carry it, countertop stores carry it, online shops carry it, uh, wood people carry it. So you can find lots and lots of tops of lots of varieties made with all different species and colors and uh, anything that works with your color choices and your kitchen design palette, you can find woods for that. Plus many of the woods can be stained before they're finished with an oil so that you can further get the color range that you're looking for in your kitchen. So it's widely available. It's very inexpensive as countertops go. That's a great pro. Uh, wide color variety, both between the grains and the species of woods and also the finishes that you can put on it. And it does have a lot of finish options. Um, you will have seams at joints, just like we talked about in bamboo. You can build it up into very large pieces if you have it custom done. The size of pieces that are currently available on the open market is somewhat limited. So there will be seams at joints. The cons here are that you can get surface, surface damage if you use it regularly and you use it in high volume food prep areas or wet areas. And that just means that you're going to have to look after it and maintain it more, which is the final con that it does require regular maintenance. All wood tops need to be oiled unless they are finished with a polyurethane to completely seal them. But the prevalent finish is uh, a mineral oil or a vegetable oil on the wood surface. And let's look at some more wood. Here are three more. The top one and the one on the left, two very different woods with some great grains. Notice the beautiful edge detailing here and here. Wood will take a beautiful edge 
And the beauty of wood is that a lot of people can do it. Woodworkers can make the tops for you. Carpenters can make the tops for you. You do not need a special top person. Um, you can get a woodworker to do it and it's, it's perfect. The third top we see here uh, by the bay window, the sink by the bay window, you notice it's high shine. That means that it's got a polyurethane finish. This particular finish does not require oiling or regular maintenance. It's going to be indestructible and durable for a period of time. There will come a day when the finish breaks down. It will break down either by uh, the amount of light that it gets on it, or in some cases, the chemicals in the water. At some point, the finish will blister or bubble or scratch off, or it will be worn by uh, abrasion. When this countertop is worn, it will need to be refinished or replaced. Unlike these tops, which get oiled regularly, but have no other finish except the wood. If you cut on a wood top, you will mark it up. If you scratch it with something that's metal or, or, or glass or uh, uh, ceramic, uh, it will scratch. Yes, you can buff it out. Yes, you can sand it or steel wool or polish it back down and re-oil it, uh, but you have to be careful because generally speaking, as hard as they are, these woods are still soft enough to scratch. So that's our butcher block and wood tops. Our third material is concrete. Now, it's an unusual material, and we usually see it outside, and we usually see it underfoot. But this is not the identical mix of concrete that you would find in a sidewalk or a driveway or a road. This is a finer aggregate, and it's a much more dense, stronger concrete. The pros and cons of concrete are as follows. It's cool and trendy. Uh, people that do this are doing it for a wow factor. And it's kind of interesting. And you, you will brag about it to everybody who comes in. Oh, look at the concrete tops. Some uh, brand new options that they're working on recently uh, allow it to do uh, some great things. And I'll show you those finishes in a moment where it looks like wood and where it looks like tile and stone. They can do some amazing things with the finish. The ones that you see here are very plain. This one obviously is concrete. It's not been colored or, or, or changed in any way. This one's been polished and sealed. This one is a little darker. So they put a, a chemical in the mix and then they did also seal this one. So it's cool and trendy and there are some cool new options uh, for finishes. The cons of concrete tops are that it's difficult to make and all of them are handmade. They're made on site. And in another slide, we'll see some of the ways they make the molds and pour the concrete in the molds to make it on site. The quality of the concrete tops varies widely based on who is making them. Somebody who's very experienced is going to make great, beautiful, smooth tops. Somebody who's trying it for the first or second time is likely to have trouble. So if you're going to dabble with concrete countertops, make sure that you pick somebody who is very experienced. They have long lead times many times, meaning that the companies that make these as a service may be booked two, three, four, and five months in advance. When they get that busy, it also means they raise their prices. So in the metropolitan areas where more people are making tops, if there aren't a lot of people to cover the demand, be expecting high, high prices. Now, concrete countertop prices are high anyway, but I just wanted you to know that sometimes they get above the kinds of prices that you expect to see based on uh, traditional uh, pricing, based on how busy these companies get. Concrete has generally speaking, a limited color palette, and you see it here. It's in the grays and blacks family. You can't get it all the way white. You generally can't get it solid black. You're looking at grays. Um, now, I'm gonna show you some very cool color options on the next two slides. Uh, but there is a limited set of colors and options for making it colored. 
Now, the, the most important thing that I'd like to impress upon you is the thickness of the concrete. The two of the, the top pictures here show the more traditional thickness of a concrete top. In order to get steel reinforcing, it has to be very thick. And when it's very thick, it changes a couple things. The first thing it changes is your actual countertop height. The cabinet underneath this is a standard size. It's 34 and a half inches tall. So when you put a three or four inch countertop on top of it, that raises your countertop from the traditional 36 inches off the floor to perhaps 37, 38, 39, or even 40 inches off the floor. So just be aware that the height of your work surface on your countertop may very well be raised if you use a concrete top. The second thing, and if you look on the bottom photograph on the right, the distance from the bottom of the upper wall cabinets to the top of the concrete top, this in a traditional kitchen is 18 inches. But what's gonna happen when you put a four, five inch thick concrete countertop over here is you have less distance. This will be two times or three times as thick as usual. And this, instead of being 18 inches, could be as little as 15 inches. That means you won't have as much room on your countertops for items. And you may very well want to raise the wall cabinets, which I know is counterproductive. When you remodel your kitchen, most people want tall wall cabinets. They want 42 inch wall cabinets. But if you're using a concrete top, you may very well go to a 36 inch wall cabinet, slide it up to the eight foot high ceiling, and give yourself a couple of extra inches in here between the cabinet and the top. All right, let's move on and look. Here are two of the finishes that I was mentioning. Uh, this is an acid finish, and this is an acid finish. The chemicals in the concrete react with the acid that is placed on them, and it stains the concrete. Then they put a lock-in sealer finish on it. You see, in this case, it's a, a fairly matte finish, but in this case, it's a high gloss. That sealer, that treatment, means that this is impervious to stains, and it is now a workable surface for food prep, and if it gets wet, it's not going to absorb that moisture. So you're not going to have staining and you're not going to have the risk of salmonella from working with meat, chicken, eggs on these tops and on this top either, even though this is just a wet bar. Now I mentioned that concrete tops are extra thick and tall. What I did not mention is that concrete tops, excuse me, what I did not mention is that concrete tops are very, very heavy. So when you use concrete tops, you have to buy cabinets that are made with plywood boxes. The plywood box cabinet is considerably stronger than the chipboard or press board box cabinet. In the last seminar I did a week ago, we covered cabinetry. And I told you that in most kitchens, you don't need to upgrade to the plywood box because there is nothing so heavy that requires them to be plywood for structural reasons. Well, in this case, you would have to upgrade to the plywood boxes just to hold up the extreme weight of the concrete top. So in many cases, when you're going past an opening in a sink base or a range uh, perhaps over top of a dishwasher, you may need some additional support over those openings as well to help carry the concrete. So it's very, very heavy. All concrete must be sealed. All concrete must be finished. And as a result, all concrete has a maintenance component. This finish would probably have to be touched up over time. Eventually, you'll wear through this one and have to clean it and reapply it. And that's just the way concrete is. If you want the cool factor, you have to put up with the ceiling and the maintenance factor. Now, as I mentioned, this is how they are actually formed. You see a dam piece that is put up around the exterior and a solid plywood panel that is put between the concrete top and the cabinet below. What this is, is actually steel. 
This gives rigidity and strength to the concrete which is poured in around it. Here you see freshly poured concrete inside a dam and you see they have gotten to this point and they're getting ready to put some more concrete in and then work it. Here is the reinforcing steel in this particular top. Now, what you'll notice is that the cabinets are all in place. The drawers have been removed, the faces have been removed, and everything has been protected because you can't afford to get concrete on your thousands and thousands of dollars of cabinets, flooring, and in, even in this case, the post that's uh, probably a structural post in that kitchen. So just be careful when you're doing your concrete tops. Granite is next. A granite is a natural stone that comes out of the ground in large, large chunks, and it is sawn into slices. Those slices are pretty much a uniform thickness. Think of it as the way we would cut a loaf of bread. We cut it into nice uniform pieces. Then those individual slices are stored until they're needed, and when they are needed, they're polished, the edges and sink cutouts are made, and then they are installed and sealed. You see, granite is a slightly porous stone. It is a natural product, and it's very hard and extremely durable, but it is a porous stone, which means it will absorb some liquids. And some of the common things that bother granite are moisture rings. If you have a glass that sweats or if you leave moisture on granite, it will absorb the moisture and it will discolor slightly until it gives that moisture back off. However, the way they have found to work with granite in kitchens for regular everyday kitchen use is to seal those pores. When the granite is installed, the fabricator will apply a chemical sealer to it and then you, the homeowner, simply have to reapply a surface sealer occasionally. In a heavy use area, you might do it every couple months. In a light use area, you might do it one or two times a year. And in the next slide I'll show you, or two slides, I'll show you the sealers. They're available everywhere at all the home stores, at all the cleaning product stores, and they're very, very easy to apply. This is not a difficult thing. But let's talk about the pros and cons of granite tops for a moment. Granite is widely available. There was a time in the 80s and in the 90s when stone tops were only for the very wealthy. We were all using laminate tops in the 70s and the 80s. And then in the 90s, DuPont put the product called Corian out, which is a solid surface top. And that became the top of choice for most mid-price kitchen remodels and upscale kitchen remodels. However, since the mid-90s, granite has become the number one material for kitchen tops. And it is because of the boom in granite mining and production. You, if you live in a, a traditional town with any kind of population at all, you're probably surrounded by five or six or seven different cabinet manuf or excuse me, countertop, granite countertop manufacturers. And because of the amount of product that's out there and the amount of fabricators and installers that are out there, the consumer has benefited. The price has dropped remarkably low on the lower end granites. They are very affordable. Many times if you go to the big box stores and home centers, you'll see very large slabs of granite in front in the entrances where they're saying $29 a square foot installed. Uh, now that may not include hooking up sinks and it may not include carting away the old top, uh, but it's basically cutting the stone to size, putting an edge on it, bringing it to your house and installing it in place of the old top. And you can't beat it. At that price, it's the best countertop choice available. Now, granite has a very, very large price range. It is the second least costly and the, the best least, of, uh, least cost top option that you have. The lowest price of granite starts as low as, just like I said, $25 to $30 per square foot installed. 
and it goes way up to over $200 per square foot installed. It has five different price ranges that all the manufacturers agree are price group one, two, three, four, five, or A, B, C, D, E. So when you're talking about granite, you know whether your color is in one group or the other, and you have a good idea of where that price range is. Granites come in lots of different shades, lots of different colors, and what you'll see is most of them come with a lot of different movement. And movement is the pattern of the grain. Movement is the variation in the colors that looks like liquid, because once it was, it was sediment and it was liquid, and then it hardened and formed, and you get some of the most beautiful patterns in granite that you'll ever see. And two of them are on display here. Notice on the left top, the tooled edge. Granite, you can put a lot of different edge treatments on it. You can even make it thicker on the edge. And you'll notice the top on the left appears to be thicker. It's not that the slab is thicker. Look at the sink cut out. And you'll see the slab is the same size as the slab in the right-hand picture. But the edge has been thickened. They actually laminate multiple pieces together to make complex edges. Now, that costs a lot more. The kitchen on the right was a lot less costly to make than the, the island top on the left. But those are the features that you'll pay for. So again, granite tops, very widely available. The price range goes from very, very, very low to way up there. That's a pro, believe it or not, because you have a lot of choices in a lot of price ranges before you get to the most expensive stone. Granite has very short lead times. From the time that you put your cabinets in till the time they can be installing your countertop can be as few as four to five days. Typically, they'll be more like seven days. Generally speaking, if you put an undermount stainless steel sink in your kitchen or in your bathroom, or you put a white china sink, undermount sink, in your kitchen or your bathroom, many times the manufacturers and fabricators of granite will supply the sink for free. Now, you'll still have to pay for your faucet, and you'll still have to pay for the plumber to hook it up once they leave, but the top and the sink can come from the same place, and you don't have to shell out the extra for the sink in most cases. Installation is generally included when you buy the tops. The fabricator will bring it to the site and take away the old top and install the new top. You get a great deal of color and look variation with granite. You get multiple edges and thicknesses as an option. It is extremely durable. Most kitchens that use granite as a countertop choice, the stone will never chip, break, crack, or fail. The cabinets will get old, the look of the kitchen will grow old, and you will remodel before the stone top ever fails. It is extremely durable. It must be sealed, however, because of its porosity. And in the next couple slides, I'll explain that. Um, the seams in granite are visible. So when you get large pieces that do an L shape like this, there will be a seam. And you can help predict where the seam will be or talk to your fabricator about where the seam will go, but there will be a seam. And when those two pieces butt together, they go ahead and they put a clear sealer in between the two so that liquids and solids don't go through from the countertop into the cabinets. Uh, and it also helps hide the joint. Now they'll be very smooth, don't get me wrong, when I talk about a seam. It's not like a tile countertop where there's a grout joint that you can put a finger down into. Uh, th this is a very smooth joint, but you'll notice the joint because the grain pattern or the pattern of the stone will change at the seam. Also, granite must be sealed, which people consider to be a con, but I'll show you how easy it is and tell you how easy it is. Do not be afraid of sealing granite. Now, the biggest drawback to granite, and the reason that you would choose not to use granite, is if you need a solid color top. Granite has almost no solid colors. So if you are looking for a pure, white top or a pure black top or a pure gray top with no variation, no pattern, no grain, granite is not your material. Granite has movement in it. 
Granite has patterns to it like you see here and like you see here. Even in this white top, there is gray and there is veining and there is movement. Over here, there's lots of color and lots of movement. The same is true here. Very different color families. This is grays, golds, and browns. This is tans and browns and reds. This is whites and grays. Granite is all over the color spectrum. Almost any color you can think of, you can find in granite if it's a natural color. What you won't find is solid colors. So if you need a solid color, you want to look to a different material. Now I'd like to show you this and point out that granite can also be used vertically as the backsplash. It's not typically used behind just an extra sink, but it may be used in a cooking location. Uh, instead of a tile backsplash, maybe you get a sheet of granite installed so that cleanup is a breeze. You spray it with a cleaner and you wipe it and there's no grout, there's no joints, it's just an easy job to clean it right up. But typically granite is used with a tile backsplash like you see over here or like you see over here. This is what the granite warehouse looks like. So when you go shopping for the granite for your kitchen, you're going to choose based on small little samples. But when it's time to actually pick the stone from which they'll make your tops, you go to the granite warehouse. And generally speaking, there will be three, four, five, six, seven, or eight slabs of each color. And you see that. Here there's about eight. Here there's about six. Here there's about seven or eight. Here there's three or four. Here there's six or seven. Over here there are four. Over here there are three. Here there are four or five. And what you want to do is you want to pick your one, two, or three slabs from those that are on stock. If there are only two or three and you need two or three, you may want to go to a different warehouse to select your stones, simply because you'll have a choice of more stones and you can pick ones whose colors, whose patterns, and whose grains are more closely matched. <clears throat> As I've mentioned several times, granite needs to be sealed. <coughs> What you see on the left is a liquid sealer, the Granite Gold. Now, I have no knowledge of this brand or the other brand that you're looking at, but when you go to a Home Depot, a Lowe's, a Menards, when you go to a Bed Bath & Beyond, when you look online on Amazon for granite sealers, you'll find both the liquid and the aerosol versions. They both work. All you do to seal your granite is you clear the countertop, you spray on the liquid or you spray on the aerosol, you wipe it down with a clean cloth thoroughly so that the entire area gets covered and then you let it air dry. When it is sealed, water will bead just like it does on a wax finish on a car. When it is unsealed or the seal or has begun to wear off, water spreads and it goes flat and it's thorough. It, it is not beading the way it would. Very easy to tell, very easy to do. And again, sealing is not a difficult thing and it does not have to be done all the time. So do not fear granite for that reason. Granite is an indestructible, wonderful surface material and it has a, a, just a plethora of colors at every price range. You should be able to find something at a very inexpensive price that will work in your color palette and in your kitchen. The next product we're looking at is laminate, laminate tops. Laminate is a series of layers of paper backing or sometimes plastic backing, and it has a melamine or plastic clear surface, and it has a picture, a photograph, if you will, of either a solid color or a pattern behind the melamine protective layer. And I have a section uh, in, in the next slide that will show you how those layers go together. But because this is a layered product, and because for many years they didn't have ways to work around it, the more traditional laminate top did what you see on the left-hand photo, and there was a dark line between surfaces. When you change from a horizontal to a vertical surface, there was a dark line. Here it's only gray. It's not black, it's not brown, which were the more 
traditional dark lines, but there is still a line between the vertical and horizontal surface on this island, which gives it away as laminate. No other product edges like that. On the right-hand side, however, you see a more modern version of the laminate where they form the edge over top of the substrate and it looks amazing like many of the other high-tech materials that we see today. However, it is still a laminate. And when it comes to making a hole in the laminate for a sink, they don't have a great way to put an undermount sink in yet. They're still working on it. There are some that are out there, but they are not fully trustworthy yet. So what you will see is like a sink on the right-hand photo, you will see a sink that comes up and overlays the counter. It comes all the way up, which means that you can't wipe spills and crumbs and debris down into the sink the way you can with an undermount sink, which is the preferred sink today. That is the only drawback of that particular laminate, the high-tech laminates that they have with the newfangled edges. Here is the picture on the lower left, the picture of the melamine. It is a layered composite with a, essentially a photograph or a print layer and then a clear top layer. What you see here is a tr fairly traditional laminate and the way they got rid of the dark lines was by doing a beveled edge. This laminate still shows a dark side, but it's hidden where the dark side of this angled piece and this piece touch, and the face piece and the angled piece touch. So they've mitered it and glued it carefully so it hides that. But nowadays, as you saw in the first picture, they're rolling the edge more, and they're forming the edges to get some very detailed edges. But again, the sink will usually come up and overlay laminate. Here again, we see a more traditional end cap on the laminate. And if you look closely, you'll see that the gray edge is showing here and all the way down. That is an end cap. It is a piece of laminate, and that is the exposed edge of that piece. This piece of laminate is rolled over the substrate, whether it's a press board or an MDF board backing. The laminate is rolled over and then rolled under. So this looks smooth and it's wonderful, but this piece, this is where the damage will usually occur and it will clip or fall apart or delaminate at these edges. Here is the more traditional older style top where you see the dark line at every joint and at every edge and at every seam. And again, the sink has to come up and overlay the top, which means you can't push liquid spills and crumbs down into the sink. Here is something that's very, very interesting indeed, where they've made a laminate that resembles wood. And it's very, very realistic looking, very lifelike looking. Now, to the touch, it would be smooth. Unlike the appearance, it would, of course, be smooth and very easy to maintain. That's one of the good features of laminate. However, uh, they've rolled it over the edge to give it the appearance of a, th a thickness of a piece of timber. And that's gorgeous. But again, what gives it away is the fact that the sink has to come up and overlay the hole and then get sealed with a piece uh, or a bead of silicone so that no leakage occurs. But it does mean that you can't brush things into the sink. Again, the drawback of laminate. So laminate tops are widely available. That's a big pro. They're very low cost. That's a big pro. They are a very large variety of colors, solids, prints, uh, tile and stone looks, and as you see on the right, wood looks. So you can get lots and lots of variety uh, of looks to match any decor or any cabinet or any room. You can get multiple edges. You don't have to have the same old standard tired edge with a dark line on it. However, the cons are that laminate tops are not very durable. Laminate tops, of course, have uh, a plastic surface and they scratch very easily and they burn very easily and they chip very easily. 
and they will delaminate, as I mentioned, at places where the edge is exposed. That will eventually get caught enough times and rubbed enough times that this end cap will slightly separate and have to be re-glued. So it is not a highly durable long-term answer. However, because you can get it for lower cost, you may be willing to do the countertops twice or even three times in the course of the life of your kitchen, in which case it works beautifully for something like that. In laminate, there are always seams at the joints. Wherever that goes down and turns a corner, there will be seams. And you will see those seams and you will feel those seams. And it's plastic. It does not have the feel of big planks of timber. It does not have the feel of stone. It is not cold and hard and firm. It is plastic and it feels like plastic. So you always have that. So that's the laminate tops. Now we'll look at quartz. Quartz is the second stone top that we're talking about. We talked about granite first and granite comes up, as I say, in great big blocks and it is sawn into slices and then those slices are polished, cut, and edges put on them, and then they're installed in your house. Quartz comes up out of the ground in chunks. Quartz is a crystalline rock, and it cannot be sawn into slabs the way granite is. So what they do is they crush it. They crush it into tiny, tiny little crystals. And if you look at the image on the right, the yellow and uh, brownish image, the beiges, goldish image on the right over here, the vertical one, you'll see some of the crystals. That's what the close-up of a quartz top looks like. Now, they've gotten good in the last five years or so at crushing these crystals extremely small, and they can make pure colors, whereas when they first came out, the crystals were highly reflective and the finishes were shiny, they now have matte finishes like you see here, and they have what appear to be very solid colors. So if you needed a perfectly white, perfectly black, perfectly gray, perfectly brown top, quartz may be one of your good options. The second thing about quartz is it's extremely strong. And when they put these crystals together in a mold with epoxy and resin, they get a material which is impervious to liquid. It is not porous at all. So it does not need to be sealed when it's installed and you do not need to seal it and maintain the seal on it over time. So it is a maintenance free top which cleans very easily with traditional household products. You can do anything with it that you can do with the other stone tops. You can put it vertically behind cooking surfaces if you wish. Typically, there will make backsplashes uh, that go two, three, four inches high from the quartz top. But in a lot of the modern kitchens, you're still doing tile backsplashes of one sort or another. And so you just have your quartz top on the horizontal. Notice some of the vo wide variety of colors that are available here, including some solids, including some speckle colors, which were done to mimic Corian. Uh, the first solid surface product that came out years ago from DuPont, which we'll talk about in a little while. And then they have some grained products that look mimic stone, different stones, different family and variety of stones. So you can get quite a wide variety of looks out of quartz. And it has become the stone of choice in many of the magazines and on the TV shows. Now, there are some drawbacks to quartz, and we'll talk about those. If you are going to do a top that is going to look like a stone, you don't need to spend the extreme amount of money to get a quartz top. These two tops, for instance, would have cost considerably less money, a thousand or two thousand dollars less, if they had gotten this in granite and not gotten this in quartz. In quartz, they have to work like crazy to make it look like a piece of stone, where granite comes out of the ground looking like a piece of stone. So in this case, if this were my client and they wanted this look, I would say don't waste your money on quartz, buy granite. But in the case where you want to get a perfectly pure, solid color, you absolutely want to buy quartz. Nothing else 
will feel like this, look like this, and perform like this top. So the solid colors of quartz are unrivaled. But if you're going to get something that looks like marble or looks like uh, a stone, then you probably want to consider saving a lot of money and buying the granite version of that stone. Now I'm going to stop for one minute before we go through all the pros and cons of quartz, and I'm going to stop. Because I said the word marble, I want to mention that we're not covering marble today. And the reason we're not covering marble, despite the fact that you will see people try to put it in a kitchen, is that it is too soft a stone. It is very porous and it is very soft, which means it can crack and chip and break very easily. And it will absorb all kinds of liquids and it will stain very easily and it will scratch when you cut on it. So do not use marble in your kitchen. If you want a marble look, go to granite or go to quartz tops. Those two tops will give you the marble look at a, a durability that is far, far superior to marble. So don't waste money on marble. And don't use it in bathrooms either because the products that you use in a bathroom, the cleaners that you use, the makeup that you use, the other uh, uh, body care products can damage and absorb into the marble where they will not absorb into quartz and they will not absorb into sealed granite. So don't go marble for your countertops, please. Okay, back to quartz. Let's go through the list of pros and cons. Quartz is now widely available. For a while, there was one brand name that everybody may be familiar with called Silestone, and it was prevalent. But now there are multiple manufacturers of quartz tops, and you can get it from all the top manufacturers that do stone, they usually also have quartz as an option. So you can see them all in the same places. And if you go to big kitchen shops, when you're talking about cabinets, most of them will have a big display of both granite and quartz so that you can see how they compare and you can price them. So quartz is widely available. Installation is included. Whoever manufactures the top will bring it to the house and install it. Now, once again, they will not necessarily install your sink, they will not necessarily install your faucet, and they will certainly not hook up your plumbing. You will have to follow that by, by having a plumber come in to do the plumbing. Um, in many cases, they will charge extra. If you are changing an old kitchen top, they will charge extra for removing the old top and discarding the old top. They try to tack on things wherever they can. So just be aware, the prices we're gonna talk about today are simply to supply the stone and install the stone, not the plumbing, and not to do all the auxiliary tasks. So quartz, widely available, installation is included. They have a terrific color variety and look variety. They have multiple edge treatments and multiple thicknesses. You can get all the same edges in quartz that you can get in granite and some of the other products, and you can get extra thick pieces if you want it to look extra thick, just like with granite. They have, uh, it is seamless product. Because it is man-made, they are able in the solid colors and in the standard quartz top, which is just the crystalline variety, they are able to make the seams disappear so in a product like this, if this is the quartz top going around this corner, you can see how long it is from here all the way down behind the sink into the corner and to the left. Nobody makes a piece of stone that is that big. So there is a seam and whether it occurs around the sink or whether it occurs around the corner, we don't know, but there is a seam there. With the solid colors, that seam will disappear. You won't see it and you won't feel it. However, with the patterned quartzes, like you see below in the marble, or like you see here with a stone look, if there are seams in this, just like with granite, you will detect the seam because it will be a place where the pattern changes. Okay, so 
It is seamless. Quartz is the most durable countertop material that we use. Nothing rivals it. It will last and it's fairly indestructible. It will last longer than the kitchen and be thrown away in spectacularly good condition. Quartz requires no regular sealing or maintenance and it is very easy to clean and it will not stain. The drawback of quartz is it is exceptionally expensive. You can buy just about a third to a half of all the granites that exist before you get to the entry level quartz product. And if you pick the more exotic and good looking quartz products, which is what you will be drawn to, they appear in the third and the fourth price range of granite. Meaning that you could probably have about 40 to 60 different countertop choices at a much lower price point than the similar looking product in quartz. So again, you'll have to go out and experience this for yourself. Find the style that you like in granite, find the style that you like in quartz, and comparatively price them. If you want the solid colors in quartz, that's much easier. They're the best product for the solid colors. So those are the pros and cons of quartz. Now we'll look at recycled glass. Recycled glass is exactly what it sounds like. They take recycled glass, they crush it into small pieces, and they put it in molds with epoxies and resins. Sounds just like quartz, doesn't it? Well, it's just about as strong. They use a little bit different binder, and they use colored binders. You see a white-based binder here. You see a brown-based binder used here, and a gold or yellow one here, a green one here a gray one or a black one up here and a blue one down below. That helps give a little bit more tint or shade to the overall product. But the glass color is usually uh, monochromatic or intentionally mixed. So you'll get a lot of blues or a lot of greens or a lot of golds or a lot of yellows or, or tans or a lot of plain clear glass or a lot of black glass. But then there are other tops where you're going to get greens and golds and blues and oranges and, and yellows and all mixed together. Uh, but this is Ice Stone, the, the number one manufacturer of recycled glass tops. And you can see the variety of colors that they offer. But it, they all look like that. And they're all shiny. And they're all hard. Now you can get square edges, you can get rounded over edges, you can get different thicknesses. You see a slightly thinner shelf up here for the eating bar. Uh, you can get seamless. Uh, so it has many of the, the advantages of the other tops we've talked about. Um, it is not as widely available, okay, but it is very durable. It is a green product because we're using post-consumer content. So that's great. It can be made to be seamless, as I mentioned. It's easy to clean and maintain, but there is limited availability. There are just not that many manufacturers doing it, and it is not as widely available as the other tops that we've been discussing. So until it is, its price will not come down, and its uh, speed of manufacture and installation will not come down to rival that of quartz or granite anytime soon. However, it is starting to be picked up by some of the bigger box stores in the major cities, so you can order some of the products through Home Depot and Lowe's, for instance. So limited availability. Installation may not be included. If you have to order this from Ice Stone, or if you use the European version that's out, I think there was one from Spain, uh, it may be shipped to your location, but the installation will be incumbent upon you to find somebody to put it in which is awkward. So I, I would not suggest it for that reason. If you cannot find somebody to supply it and install it, maybe look for a different product. It has limited colors. You can see here, there are 20 colors in the ice stone chart. That may have changed by now. That I don't know the age of their particular chart that we're looking at, but there are limited colors compared to all the other tops that we're looking at today. It has limited edge surfaces. You can get the eased edge, you can get the square edge, you can get the bull nose or half bull nose or full bull nose. 
but it doesn't have a lot of the tooled edges that the other tops have. Now, the worst problem is that not only do you have limited availability, but it's very, very expensive. So a lot of people who want to do good and buy something that's good for the environment and a durable surface go looking at this and hope to buy it. But when they compare its price even to quartz, they'll find that many times it's impractical. It's just too costly. So it is one of the more expensive tops that we've been looking at. Next, we have soapstone. Soapstone is a natural stone, much like granite, that comes up and is sawn, and it is made into planks, and those planks are cut and polished, and uh, it is put on the countertop, as you see here. Soapstone looks cool. I mean, it is a great look, and it has a wonderful feel. If you put your hands and run it over it, no other material feels like soapstone but that's where the pros of soapstone end. All the rest of the items on this list are cons. There is a very small color variety, and you pretty much see the range here from light gray to almost black. There are seams at all the joints, so when it goes down into the corner, there will be a seam. It can stain easily. Uh, because it is porous, it absorbs, so it has problems with water and with all liquids and with food products. So you couldn't put a tomato on it and leave it there for two weeks. It would break down and absorb some of the tomato juice. So we have to be careful of its absorption and therefore it needs to be sealed and it needs regular maintenance and cleaning and it is a tough material. It is a very soft so stone, as I mentioned, so it can also scratch. So you have to be careful not to put big, heavy things on it and push them or pull them across its surface. You have to be very careful not to cut on it. Whereas you can take a knife or a cleaver and cut on granite and cut on quartz and do no damage to the stone. In fact, you will damage your knife. Here, the opposite is true the knife will damage the stone. So be careful it scratches. It has limited colors, it has limited edges, and it requires regular sealing and maintenance. And of course, it is very expensive. So a long list of cons, but it is a wonderful, wonderful product. If you see it and you feel it and you the color works for your kitchen, it may be worthy of consideration on an island where you're not cooking, where you're not using the sink and it's just a work surface or an eating surface because then the maintenance is so much easier and the durability is not in question. The next material is solid surface. Now most of you will recognize the name Corian. Corian is the big brand name of solid surfaces. DuPont put it out, I don't know, 25, 35 years ago. Uh, and it is a solid surface, meaning that they have put together minerals with man-made materials, resins and, and, and glues, and made a solid material out of what was uh, a mineral. So they started with what you see down on the lower left, a few solid colors, some uh, bright ones and some muted ones, blacks, grays, whites, tans, uh, a couple of little off, beiges and greens and, and what have you. And then they went to the speckled look. They did it because it mimicked the stone that the wealthy people were using at the time, which was basically simple granites. However, they've expanded their lines as well. And you can get a lot more options today than you could get in the 1990s. What you see in the pictures here uh, are indicative of the solid surface materials. They can have fancy edges or plain edges, but they always have integral sink basins. And in all three shots, you see that the sink is one continuous piece. It's a different color in our kitchen pictures than it is in the bathroom picture, but it is one continuous top. And that is true of only solid surfaces. Now, the problem is that it's a plastic and it is very, very soft. 
it scratches easily. And I mean very easily. If you had a cardboard box that was stapled together and not taped together and you pushed it across this, it would scratch the surface. If you took a paper clip and you rubbed it across, it would scratch the surface. If somebody ever put a cigarette down or a scalding hot pot onto it, it would melt or burn the surface. If you used an electric fry pan and plugged it in and used it in the same place every Saturday morning for pancakes or eggs, it would eventually harm the surface. So much so that DuPont and the other manufacturers had a lifetime warranty when they issued the material and had to rescind that and shorten it considerably because the top was failing everywhere. So if your surface burns or if it scratches, their literature will tell you, well, you can buff it right out. Well, that's technically true. You can go get a very fine sandpaper and a steel wool and you can buff it. But now you have marred the finish. And in order to make the finish look right so that the change in the finish doesn't show, you have to bring in a technician and charge you several hundred dollars just to touch up a little spot. My advice is because of its extreme expense, do not use the solid surfaces in today's market. You can get better looks out of natural stone products or wood products, and you can get those looks for much less money. And we'll see the relative price comparison in a little while, and you'll be able to see that for yourself. But these are still products that are available. It's just that their price point has not dropped over time, even though they went from the most popular product in the 1990s, they are one of the less popular products today. The final one that we're going to look at today is ceramic and porcelain tile. Tops have been made out of tile for a long, long time, but this is no longer your original top with a wood edge and a four by four or a six by six tile. You can do remarkable things with tile. The reason I'm mentioning ceramic and porcelain is because they are in the same price range and generally have similar surface treatments. You can get all kinds of variety of looks from solid colors to stone looks uh, to, to even some other green looks. Um, so it's a tremendous material for a lot of different reasons. They make formed edges like you see on the left uh, and as you see on the right. And in the next page, we'll see that you can also use the same tile on the vertical surface that you use on the horizontal surface in some applications. One cool thing about tile is that we do use it for backsplashes. And if you look on the left-hand picture, you'll see that the tile backsplash is there. And on the right-hand picture, again, a tile backsplash. So when you have a tile surface on your countertop and you turn it up to become the backsplash also, you can really tie in the look of the room. Here they picked the same color family, even though it's a different size and shape of tile. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of tile tops. On the pro side, they're very easy to make. Just about any craftsman can lay the tile for a tile countertop. And that means that there's extreme wide availability. You don't have to go to a specialist like you do with quartz or granite. You can go to anybody and they can make you a tile top. That means, however, that there is a lot of variability in the quality of the tile laying and the quality of the top. So pick somebody who has some great tile skills. Tile tops are inexpensive. It takes a piece of substrate or backer board and it takes the tile material, some grout, and that's it. You're off to the races. So they can put down the tile and grout it and you're good to go. It has a wide variety of looks and colors just from what you see here, completely different color families, sizes, and appearances. One has few grout joints, one has more grout joints, but one is uh, very bold looking and colorful. It works great with the cabinets and the floor. Um, so you get a lot of looks and a lot of colors. And you could blend it, as I mentioned, with the backsplash very easily. It has a high durability. It's possible that you will crack this if you drop something big and heavy on it, 
uh, like a cookie jar or a great big turkey platter or an appliance of some kind, like a KitchenAid mixer, you could crack a tile. If you have cast iron pans and it hits the edge, you could break one of the edge pieces. So they are not indestructible, but they are durable. And the con side of the tile tops are the grout lines, the seams, and the bumps. Uh, you can't put tile together without grout joints, which means you have seams and you have bumps. The more grout joints you have, the more seams and bumps you have, for example, on the right compared to on the left. And some people just don't like the idea of a plate or a glass sliding on a countertop and bumping along as opposed to sliding smoothly. And the grout does require some maintenance in many cases, unless they use a waterproof grout, which exists and it's just a little tougher to work with. And you might very well consider because the grout joint discoloration is probably the biggest problem with a tile kitchen top. The same way the grout in your bathroom floor or bathroom shower or tub surround will discolor over time, so will food products discolor the grout in your countertop. So a sealed grout makes sense, but be realistic. We don't reseal grout in, in our bathrooms, so it's very unlikely we would reseal grout in our kitchens on our countertops either, and that poses a potential health risk. So use the uh, water resistant or, or uh, non-absorbent grouts in the kitchens if you do tile tops. As I mentioned, you can use the same tile surface vertically as you do horizontally. The center picture shows that perfectly where the large format tile comes right out to the edge, comes right out to the corner, and the same tile is used on the vertical surface. The problem with this is that the edge of the tile is exposed. So the tile that you use must have finished edges because at every place where a cut edge shows, it has to be a finished look. The way to avoid that is what you see here. Both of these have a tile system where there is a frame of some kind and the tile goes in the frame and the grout goes around the tile. The tile goes in the frame and the grout goes around it. But there is a frame that goes all the way around the tile. And you see what that frame looks like over here, where you literally slide the tile into the frame from, a, from the side and lay it on from above. And this allows you to have a very easy to clean transition from surface vertical to surface horizontal, from surface horizontal to surface vertical. And that's an example of what the finished product might look like and up here as well. So that's how tile works. Now let's look at the countertop cost comparison. And you see the products that we just looked at and they are ranked from the lowest cost on the top of the list at laminate down through butcher block granite, ceramic tile and porcelain, bamboo, solid surface, quartz, recycled glass, soapstone, and concrete. That is their entry level price. The pricing is done in dollars per square foot. So you have to calculate how many square feet of countertop and backsplash you use to turn this into a final number. But the entry point on laminate, the simplest laminate colors, start at only about $20 per square foot installed, and they'll run to almost $50 per square foot installed for the more expensive variety. Butcher Block starts at about $35 to $40 per square foot and runs up to about $100 per square foot installed. Now that's wood at this end, Butcher Block at this end. Butcher Block is not a very expensive material. So before you even get to these other materials, you can buy Butcher Block which means you can put two or three of these price in before you get to one of these. Granite starts at a very low price. The other day I walked into a Home Depot and I saw $29 per square foot installed. Now again, that does not include a sink, it does not include the faucet, it does not include the plumbing to hook up your disposal, your drain, your faucet. However, 
it does include the installation and, and fabrication of a granite top. And when you can get that for $29 in six or seven standard colors, that's a tremendous price. And before you can get to any of these other products, you can get to granite. So price group one in granite, those eight or 10 or 12 colors, price group B or two in granite, those additional 12 or 14 colors, price group C in granite, and now you're finally into bamboo, solid surface. Here's where quartz starts. Quartz starts in price group three of granite, which means you could probably have had 25 different countertop choices before you get choice one of quartz. And you probably won't like choice one of quartz. You probably want the quartz in this price range, which means you can have three quarters of all the granite that's available before you can get that one piece of quartz, which is why I say, if you want a stone look, look here first and look here in quartz last. Recycled glass, as I say, more expensive. And you may find that the price is actually higher than this range because of where it comes from. If you are not in a place where it is distributed and fabricated uh, and it has to be trucked in or shipped in, it could be considerably higher. Soapstone, again, big price range, but a high price range. And then concrete. While it's made by hand, it has to be made in place, each one fabricated by a craftsman in your kitchen, and the price can go up, 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 up. So if you want the cool factor, you pay for the cool factor. So this just gives you a glimpse of where the different materials line up by price. So that's it. That's today's presentation on All About Kitchen Countertops. I appreciate your tuning in and staying with me. I hope you've learned a great deal. It's a very interesting topic, and it really will help you put the finishing touches on the color scheme and pattern for your kitchen. So you know a great deal more about tops than you did when we started a little while ago. I hope you've enjoyed this. My name is Jim Molinelli. I'm the Remodeling Professor. If you need the notes, check my website, jimmolinelli.com. You can go to the seminars page. You can check out upcoming seminars and topics. You can look at this and past seminars once they're posted and watch the replays. And you can download the notes there as well.